Okay, so I'm Diana, and uh, and what I'm a writer, and I was also a contributor to Forbes. And so what I've been doing is actually doing interviews with Good Unicorn founders. So this all started a while back. Basically, I was thinking about um, why it is that there are so many quote bad unicorns out there. So anything from the Ubers to Theranoses to the WeWork situations, and sort of like catastrophic explosions in media. And one of the big questions that came into my mind was, uh, where are all the good unicorns? Are there good unicorns? Do they exist? And so what ended up happening is um, I was looking at the list of about 835. Now there are 840 unicorns and uh, had a research team come together and figure out, OK, who are the good unicorns? And so using the UN Sustainability Development Goals, we were able to isolate out the good unicorns on this list of 840 unicorns um, and basically decide, OK, who, you know, what are how are they doing this? What, what's going on here? And so out of the list of original 835 or so unicorns there are about 48 that actually were undeniably in service of our people and planet. A lot of maybes, but there were 48 that were undeniably so. And so that list of founders, um, I reached out to and interviewed them for Forbes. And in the process, it was all around how to develop a blueprint for building a good unicorn with the ultimate objective being how do we actually build billion dollar businesses that are in service of our people on planet um, and not just like the next hot pizza app. So this is the premise of this session. Um, I've had the incredible privilege and opportunity to deep dive hour long interviews with these founders and really pull out uh, the wisdom and insights from their journey. And so I'm happy to share them with you today. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is just introduce the 13, 13 of the good unicorns that I've interviewed that I wanted to feature today. So you can get a feeling for what these companies are, what they're building. And then after that, what I'm going to do is share stories from the interviews, um, specifically answers to questions that y'all find the most interesting. So that's where if you can go into the poll section and just choose um, there's the first question up there is which answers would you like to hear from good unicorn founders? If you can choose which questions you're most interested in, I will actually dial in and just focus on answering those questions from the perspective of all 13 founders that I interviewed. So go over there if you can give it a look and actually just fill in your poll. I don't fully understand how this poll thing works and when the results will show up, but we'll find out soon. Okay. So let me get started. So I'm going to introduce the good unicorns. And just to give a quick definition, so what is a good unicorn? Um, $1 billion valuation plus, plus they are also in service of at least one UN Sustainable Development Goal. Uh, if you're not familiar with the UN SDGs, Google 17 UN SDGs and you'll come up with the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. Um, it's a bonus if they're B Corp certified. Not all of the good unicorns are B Corp certified. Many of them are. Um, and so the good unicorns were found again from a list of 835 unicorns from 40 plus countries. And there were around 48 that seemed fairly, that met actually most of these criteria sets. Uh, and I had the opportunity to interview them. And now you're going to get all the insights in an abridged 20 minute PhD on how to build a billion dollar venture for good. Okay. Three most critical things you do as founder is the most popular question right now. And also after that, how did you get to product market fit? Okay, so why don't I start with the three most critical things you do as, found, as a founder? And I'll give you the answer to this from the perspective of every single one of the founders of the companies I just described. Um, and feel free to jump in and add more into the poll. Let me just check, check chat really quickly. Um, okay, I just saw everyone's stuff. Are we all good? Okay, I'm so, so sorry about the, the click out. Okay, here we go. Okay, so we're gonna go back in and I'll do a brief reminder of what each company does as I go through because I sort of lightning went through the 13 companies we're gonna talk about. You can also look in the poll section and you'll see a list of the companies in the second poll name and what they're working on. So you can quick like Google them to refresh who's answering what. Okay, so let me go into just double check the results really quickly and make sure we're still on the same page. Okay, so what are the three most cri critical things each of these founders does in their work to create a good unicorn? So let me go there and start that. Okay. Okay, so the three most critical things that we're gonna focus in on, sorry, I have like these interviews are literally, it's like a 200 page slide deck of the interviews themselves and the insights. By the way, if you want access to it, let me know and I might be able to send you a file afterwards and you can see exactly what it is. Okay. 
So we'll start with um, we'll start with Uplight. Uplight CEO. So Uplight, remember, is the one that's on the grid edge. They're solving climate crisis on the grid edge by working with utility companies in the United States. And they've built their entire acquisition, like their entire growth strategy through acquisition. So they've essentially acquired their way into becoming a, a good unicorn, which is really fascinating. Um, so the three most critical critical things that Adrian, the founder of Uplight does, um, we're on the question of what are the three most critical things you do as founder of a good unicorn? Um, so Timo from Gusto actually has a beautiful response to this. And remember, Gusto is reducing food waste. They're also the B Corp that has 95% of their employees as shareholders of the company. Um, and so Timo's, Timo's question, I'm just going to go into what his response was. So he says, I constantly challenge myself. What is the only thing that Timo can do to relentlessly delegate? And ultimately, it comes down to very few things, vision and purpose. I think it's operationalizing vision and purpose into strategy. And then it's people and culture. So who's on the leadership team? What are our values? How do we epitomize them? How do we make the winning behaviors as repeatable as possible for people to really understand what we love and care about? So that's what I spent all my time on. Um, Timo actually did something really unique. So he said, to be the best CEO I can be, I actually became a coach. First, I had coaches. And then I became coaching certified. And then I did an executive MBA on the weekends just to think more strategically and get management training. I've worked with seven different coaches in the last couple of years. So I've hugely benefited from that. And so I think the biggest behavior to unlearn is telling people what to do, to instead ask questions, deep questions, and get them to develop their own skills. And if you feel like they don't get it right all the time, that doesn't really matter because the more you ask, the more room there is to grow. So that's Timo's response to that question. I'll do one more. And then I think what I'm going to do is switch over to polls and double check which question you're most interested to get the answers from, from these founders. And then I'll go there. Also, I think I need to get out of the sun. Give me a second. So I live in Madeira Island off the coast of Portugal. And, um, and it's kind of hot right now. So sorry if I'm sort of sweating. Okay. Are you ready? Okay. So I think we'll do one more of these. I think, um, Emeritus is really strong. Okay, this is a great one. So question, the question again here is what are the three most critical things you do as founder of a good unicorn? So Emeritus is making MIT Harvard level education accessible to all, right? So their CEO, Ashwin, um, here's, his, here's his advice on the subject. She said, the first is communicating the vision and values to our people. Six months ago, we were 800 people. Now we hired another 900. They don't know the story. Why do we exist? This is where our mission is an asset, because when I say, look, we'll be a $2 billion revenue company five years from now, it doesn't resonate as much as, look, we'll touch the lives of 1 million participants and indirectly 5 million people. The second thing that's critical that I do as a founder is a framework called Box 1, Box 2, and Box 3. So I, um, sidebar, so I'm going to move out of Ashwin's words right now. This is really, really valuable. I personally found this super valuable as a founder, so it's worth just... Okay. So I think in the, and what I'm going to address now is I'm going to switch out of the three most critical, critical things you do as founder, as a founder to advice to aspiring good unicorn founders, because I see that one has 27% of our votes. So we'll go there and then let me check one more thing. So looks like y'all want to hear more about Alzion, about Uplight and Notco. We could do that and Gusto and Culture Amp. Okay. And it looks like, wow. Okay. So some of you are just hanging out. Some of you are looking for a good unicorn size problem to solve and building one. Okay, cool. So let me go in and actually just, I'm going to focus in on the question about advice to aspiring good unicorn founders. I'll actually go through all of the responses because I think this is one where the, all the responses are super valuable and then you'll get to compare between good unicorn responses. Um, let me just make sure I don't lose you guys. Okay, we're good. We're here. We're live. Okay. Um, Serge, my computer is not overheating. It's something, there's some bug going on with this. I have no idea. Okay. So we're going to go to the last bit of advice. It could be the computer overheating because I'm talking too fast. Okay. Advice to aspiring good unicorn founders. So we'll start with Uplight. Um, again, Uplight, y'all remember, right? It's grid edge climate change stuff. So Uplight says, start big, think of a big problem. In my case, it was climate change. So examine that problem, find a place in the problem that is small enough to get started and big enough that you can make an impact. The next thing is become a B Corp because there's a huge community of people who are trying to do good in the world with business and you can learn from them and be supported by them. We haven't found a better thing than being a B Corp. We're going to go public at some point and our plan is to be one of the biggest B corporations out there. Um, you've got to make money a force for good. 
And then he said, uh, just don't give up. I've had nights where I've literally cried myself to sleep, but never did I think about giving up. So that's Uplight's response to advice to aspiring good unicorn founders. And I've also loved to hear what's resonating with you from this. So feel free to um, drop any sort of like comments inside there around just like, oh, I have more questions. David Dorling, it's great to see you back. Definitely keep pinging questions. And I'll try to answer if I know the answers. Um, okay, so I think... This is a good one. So I think, oh, sorry, I'm pulling in the one. So Alzion's advice for good unicorn founders. And Alzion has created the pill that um, stops slash halts Alzheimer's. So Martin's advice is, I'll just say, we never thought about being a unicorn. It's never crossed our minds. We're physicians and scientists coming from a situation where we're trying to solve this seemingly impossible problem. You cannot plan for commercial success in a situation where the success rate for drug development is a fraction of 1%. That's a near perfect fail rate. I guess my advice would be pick a big, hairy problem and just try to figure it out. Try to stay independent, focus on the truth, the data, the rest will come along. Stick with it and you might just build something no one would ever believe is possible. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, a couple questions. I'm going to answer the questions in the room before I go on to the next story. Uh, none of these are 501c3 orcs. They're all for-profit companies. They're all um, billion dollar valuations, for-profit unicorns. Um, Peter, thanks for the question. Box one, box two, box three. Okay, so let me see. So where, Gail, Gal, Gail, do you mind dropping in where we got cut off? And then I'll come back to that question and let you know. Um, and then David, I'm happy to send over all this stuff. And then also, David, you had asked a question about NOTCO. How does it connect with or require regenerative agriculture at scale with smallholder farm farmers? Do not know the answer to that question. I will look into that for you. Um, check out NOTCO. Just go like Google NOTCO and you'll see exactly where the parameters are. They primarily focus on artificial intelligence for being able to isolate out plant combinations that taste exactly identical to meat. So it's like a, it's like a um, mad scientist factory of incredible innovation that's happening inside that company. Um, okay, great. I'm going to come back and do the next one. So more advice to aspiring good unicorn founders. So this is from Zipline. So Zipline does drone deliveries that save people's lives. So medical supply delivery. Um, so Keenan said, I had this old professor who gave me this 10 call rule, 10 phone calls. It's a get out of a rut exercise. Go and find 10 actual phone numbers online and call them. Learn about the industry. Ask a ton of questions. If they won't talk to you, who do you know that might talk to me? Can I visit your company? Can I see your supply chain? Can we get some feedback about something we're working on? So that's how you get out into the world and learn. That's one of the things I love about humanity. As an individual, we've got one out of eight billionth of the world in our head of the human experience. So go out and talk to people. Lots will say no, but that's the fun of it. The people who let you in and show you around and teach you things, you'll see opportunities to make an impact that you could just not imagine. Um, also, I have to add, this makes fundraising easy. Investors love customers. So go find customers and talk to them. Um, from Divi Homes. So this is a Dana's advice. And she's making the unmortgageable. Now, this is like the why I wasn't like this on another session I was facilitating. So I don't know what's going on with the technology. Um, okay, so suggestion, move this session to the Q&A and gather town. Let's do it.